What's up everybody, Eric with Trout's Fly Fishing here in Denver. Um, so today we're gonna tie a, a hopper pattern that I'd like to say is completely mine, but it's, it's not actually uh, all mine. had the opportunity to go to Argentina a few years back and one of the things they talked about there was you're going to want a bunch of streamers and you're going to want Chernobyl ants. So I tie a whole box full of Chernobyl ants. Get down, we start fishing and guide's like, all right, grab your dry fly rod, th throw that, throw that ant. And so I grab it, throw it. And the first thing the guide says is he's like, what is that? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, what is that fly? And I was like, it's a Chernobyl ant. He's like, ah, it's not a Chernobyl ant. And so he opens up his box and he pulls out their version of a Chernobyl ant, which I'm like, well, that looks like a hopper. <laughs> and he's like, oh no, this is a Chernobyl ant. Um, interesting thing is, is that I've been tying it ever since. Uh, so that was 2011. Um, I, I tie them in, in a wide array of sizes and colors. Uh, tan is by far my favorite. Uh, but it, it's kind of cool because it's a very, very buoyant, hopper. Um, it's, it's pretty much three materials. It's foam, it's rubber legs, and it's a, a wing to make it a little easier to see. Um, and it's pretty simple to tie, uh, which I like. I can knock out a bunch of them in a hurry. Um, so we're going to tie the hovercraft hopper. So on this pattern, um, basically everything is, uh, is either tan uh, as far as the body goes. Um, the idea here is that I don't really do anything underneath the fly because um, as I wrap this foam on, it kind of gets pulled around the bottom of the hook. Um, so I'm using uh, Ultra Thread 140 Denier Tan, and then I have my Chernobyl cutter that I use to cut the, the two body pieces. Uh, basically, it's three millimeter and two millimeter foam. Um, so there's two layers of foam on this. Uh, so the first layer of foam, I'm just gonna kind of measure it up. I want, um, this is the, the medium sized Chernobyl cutter. Um, the reason I like that for this size of hook, um, this is a size 10, uh, 52, 12. And what I like about it is this is the perfect length. I don't really have to trim anything um, on this bottom piece. So basically I'm gonna kind of line it up to where I have a little bit of a tail off the back end. And I'm just gonna get a good amount of thread around there to hold it tight. And then I'm gonna tie on the second piece right in the same spot. And the idea here is you get a little bit of separation on that back part hanging off um, because when I go to tie in the, the grizzly barred rubber legs, um, you can do any color you want, but I always, I always for some reason, kind of lean towards yellow and black. And if I take a full strand of this, and I'll basically, I'm gonna cut it in half twice, and then I have my four legs that I don't have to trim a whole lot off at the end. And one of the little tricks that I think is great for rubber legs, wrap it around the, the thread and you can just pull it right into where you want it. Give it a few tight turns to lock in this side and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, a couple of two, three nice tight turns. And then for the body part of this, basically I'm not gonna use this top piece. I'm gonna advance my thread just a little bit and I'm just gonna capture the bottom piece of foam. So now basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a little bit of a segmented body on the bottom. And the nice thing about this foam is you get it tied in tight where it'll stay put, but you can still manipulate it to get everything to kind of sit where you want it. And I'll pull that back and 
advance the thread a little bit again. Get a second piece of uh, segmentation. And then on this last one, I want to advance it, but I don't want to get really tight to the, to the eye of the hook. I want to have a little bit of space there. So now I have three segments to that bottom part of the body. And then this top piece, I'm literally just pulling over the top. And then once we kind of have everything situated where we want it, um, the top piece of foam, I'll cut that flush because um, I, don't, I don't need that piece. And then um, I'm going to take a piece of uh, uh, polypropylene floating yarn in white. And what I found is the way this, this size card is, it kind of gives you segments. I'll cut off two segments. And the idea there is, is that when I double it and I go to tie it in, I tie it in right in the middle. And then I'll fold it back. And I'm not too worried about that not laying back yet. Because after I get the front legs on, we're going to pull this front piece of foam back and that'll pin everything going back. So we'll get these front legs on. And when I'm putting those legs on, I'm, I'm pulling fairly hard on that. I wanna, I wanna make sure they're locked in place pretty well. I know a lot, of, a lot of flies that I've tied and bought, the legs slide out, slip around, move. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that. I'd prefer that the legs stay where you put them. So the last little bit on this, I wanna fold this piece of foam back to form a head. And I'm kinda looking at where the eye of the hook is. I'm not too concerned about how much that foam's going back because I can always trim it. I just want to make sure that I get enough of it to, to form just a little bit of a head there. And again, I'm going to pull pretty tight on that to lock that in. And then uh, we're going to we'll throw it actually. Get a few turns between the the head and the eye of the hook, and we'll give it a whip finish. And we can trim our thread off. And then as far as the, the length of the wing goes, um, I don't really want it to go all the way back to the back of the fly because really all it's there for is, is visibility on the water. So I'm going to trim it basically even in length with that, that very back segment. And that kind of gives you the, the perfect length of wing. And then for me to get the legs all the same length, I typically just pull them all up and cut them all at the same time. Saves a little bit of time. And then the last little step I like to do is on the bottom of this fly, we've got all your thread pieces and, and that little slit down the middle. I'll just take some head cement and I'll basically just put a little dab where each segment is just for a little added durability on that fly. When brown trout start chewing on it, um, I want it to stay together. And that is the Hovercraft Hopper. Thanks for tuning in. Um, come see me at the shop uh, and like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.